This last week in our vacation Bible school, we had a theme for the week. No matter what happens in life, when life is crazy, God is good. And, and we followed the children of Israel from their time in Egypt through the Red Sea into the wilderness and all the way to the Promised Land. And at the beginning, we saw how the children of Israel for many, many years were slaves in Egypt and they made bricks with straw out of mud for the Pharaoh to build his cities. Can you imagine what it's like to be a slave? You know, first you work 45 hours or 40 hours a week or more for the king, and then maybe you get to spend a couple of hours to work for yourself and support your family. I can't imagine the hardship that would be, but in all of that, God was good and God was faithful to his people. And then we, we, we saw the children of Israel being led out of Egypt through Moses, God's servant, and Moses brought 10 terrible plagues on Egypt, and those must have been scary times. Sometimes we endure scary times in the world in which we live too. And imagine seeing those plagues happen. Some of them affected the children of Israel as well. And then there was that last one where the firstborn of Egypt would die when the angel of death went through the city. And the children of Israel had to trust that when they painted the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their houses that the angel of death would pass over. That had to be scary, waiting for that night to pass. But in the scary times of our life, God is good. God is near. God is always with us. We saw the God being with the children of Israel during the changing times of life. So they had been in their nice houses in Egypt, maybe small, simple houses. They had food on the table. Now you pack up and take this gigantic camping trip for the next 40 years. And you can imagine, where do we get the food? Where do we get the water? But God provided for his people. In the same way, during the changing times of your life, when you pass from childhood to adulthood to old age, God is always near, God always provides. We looked at the sad times in our life, and there we went to the cross of Jesus. The saddest thing in our life is our own sins. But God gives us this comfort that our sins are forgiven through Jesus on the cross. And some of the sad times in our life is because of death, of a loved one or our approaching death. But there Jesus' resurrection gives us the hope of eternal life. And finally we went to the promised land with the children of Israel and they crossed the Jordan River and again the water stood up on both sides. And they took stones from a river and put up a memorial to remember that God is good. And we learned in that lesson that in the good times of our lives, sometimes we have to try not to forget, and it's a good thing to remember that God is always good. And I think you can hear that theme from our vacation Bible school reflected in the Apostle Paul's words to the Philippians this morning. Because in all the things of his life, and all the bad things in his life, he could always say, I, I will still rejoice, because he knew that God is always good. So let's listen to the words of the Apostle Paul in our text. He starts our text with these words, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you've renewed your concern for me. He says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord. Paul must have had a really charmed life. He must be living a really good life to say, I, I rejoice in the Lord. But that's not true. Paul's life was a really difficult life. This was from the epistle lesson from last Sunday, from 2 Corinthians. And Paul wrote a kind of a journal of his traveling, his coming and going. He says, I've worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, and been flogged more severely. Flogging is when they whip you with this terrible whip. 25 times I received from the Jews 40 lashes, five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. So five times he was whipped 39 times. Can you imagine what his back looked like? The scars he must have bore? Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from the rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, 
and danger from the Gentiles and danger in the city and danger in the country and danger at sea and in danger from false brother, brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst, have gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all of the churches. Not an easy life. And what was the circumstance of Paul's life at that moment when he penned these words, I rejoice greatly in the Lord. Paul was in prison in Rome. It was a house prison and he was chained to the floor and he had four Roman soldiers watching over him. But the worst thing you can do to a missionary is put him in jail. He, he wasn't out among the people. He wasn't pounding the streets and he wasn't going to Rome or to... Uh, to Spain that he had planned to do. He had been two years in Caesarea waiting for the governor who wanted a bribe to do something about his trial. Finally, he appealed to Rome, so they took him to Rome. Now it's another two years before his trial would come to a completion there. So for four years he was in jail. How fun was that? So the Apostle Paul had his ups and his downs in his life. And in all of that, he said, I rejoice greatly in the Lord. <clears throat> Friends, I think one of the lessons we need to learn and one of the lessons we tried to teach our children this last week is that life is like that. Life can have its ups and downs. It can have its bad times and its sad times and, and everything in between. And sometimes children have to learn that even at an early age. I read a post that, uh, on Facebook that my former associate uh, posted this last week. His son had gone to a soccer camp in Green Bay in one of the public schools. And he's eight years old. And he wore his Jesus Saves soccer jersey that he had from the soccer camps that we have in St. Peter every summer. And when he wore that, uh, he came home the first day and dad said, so how was, how was camp today? Bad, he said. Why was it bad? One child made fun of me because I believed in Jesus. Another boy said, Jesus is dead. Can you imagine that? An eight-year-old getting ridiculed for his faith. But that's the way life is. People, uh, the world is going to hate us for believing in Jesus. And if it's not the persecution times, Paul was being persecuted. He was in prison for his faith. It's just the hard times of this life. One of the things I tried to share with the kids this week, and I told them the story, <clears throat> that as you go through life, life is never fair. I, I bet you I used that with my own children a hundred times when they were disappointed in something. I said, life is not fair. So my son was senior in high school. And he was a very good trumpet player. He was first chair from the time he was a freshman in school. But the director had a policy that you didn't get to play a lot of solos, maybe one, even if you're a first chair, but the seniors and the juniors, but especially the seniors got to play most of the solos. He, he waited his time. And his senior year was very excited in the spring of the year there was a concert and he would have seven solos to play. Uh, they all, also had a baseball game that day, and that afternoon, a hot, he was pitching, and the ball came right back to the pitcher and hit him right in the mouth. <laughs> and his lips were just totally swollen. Someone else had to play trumpet that night. Life isn't fair. And that's just a minor bump in the road, right? A girl gets in a car accident and her vertebrae is broken and she's paralyzed for the rest of her life. You hear stories like that all the time. Or families in a car accident and a, a man loses two daughters or his wife and a daughter. And the stories go on and on and on and you can tell the stories of your own life. Life isn't fair. It's like a roller coaster that's going up and down. But through all of that, one thing doesn't change. God is good. His mercies endure forever. God's faithfulness endures forever. 
God's, God is always with us, and, and the fact that Jesus died on the cross to redeem us from our sins, that doesn't change. And because of that, we can say with the Apostle Paul, I rejoice greatly in the Lord. And, and listen to, again, Paul's words. He says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. The Apostle Paul knew some good times as well as some bad times. And when he was with the Philippians in Philippi, those were good times. Lydia, uh, a maker of purple, a, a wealthy woman, had invited him to live with her in his house. So I, I imagine when Paul was in Philippi, he got his own room, someone probably did his laundry, he ate good food every day. It was a good time for Paul in his life. But as he says there, there were also the bad times in his life, times when he was well fed and there were times when he was hungry, times he had plenty and times he had want. But then he says, I can do all things through him, through Jesus who gives me strength. Even in the bad times of our life, even in the lean times of our life, God is always good. I remember my father teaching us that lesson when, when we were children. It was a bad summer. It was hot and it was dry. And it was dry in the spring when the corn was planted and it was dry throughout the entire summer. We didn't get much of a first crop, almost no second crop in hand, absolutely no third crop. Uh, the corn was about four foot tall, maybe five, and the, the cobs were very thin and very small. And I remember in the fall of the year, my dad saying, you know what, when, the, when things like this are in the lean times, somehow it seems like that, that, that little bit of hay and that little bit of corn still sees the cattle through. And it's like that in life. In the lean times of our life, God is still with us and God will always provide for us. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. But the most important thing are Paul's words when he says, in the Lord... Don't ever expect life to be fair. If life were fair, then you should suffer forever for your sins. If life were fair, you should have a life of misery all the time. Because you don't deserve any goodness from the hand of God because of the sins you commit every day. But when we look to the cross of Jesus, that puts our whole world and our whole life into perspective. Because Jesus died for our sins, God has forgiven your sins. Because Jesus died for your sins, God has reconciled you to himself. Because Jesus died for our sins, you know that God is good and that God will be good to you and for you your whole life through. Whether you're well fed or hungry, whether you're in plenty or in want, no matter what the circumstances you have in your life. So don't measure your life by your circumstances. Always see your life through the cross of Jesus Christ. When I was in my early 20s, I visited my aunt, my great aunt Ida. She was 94 years old at the time. She was very tiny and very weak. Uh, she had a terrible case of cataracts with these really thick Coke bottle glasses that, and she still couldn't see well. She couldn't see enough to read and she loved to read her Bible. And she was a little bit hard of hearing as well. And, and when I was talking to her, she was just kind of having a little bit of a pity party for herself. And, and she told me how her husband had died over 40 years ago and she had been alone ever since. And, and then she says, Charles, she says, I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing left in this world. And I just thought for a moment and I said, Tante Ida, we have Jesus. And then a broad smile broke out on her face and she said, ah, yes, we have Jesus and we have our Heavenly Father and we have the forgiveness of sins and we have eternal life and we have strength for each day, and she just kept going on and on and on and on and on. She remembered the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. She remembered that our God is good. 
You know the expression, your glass is half full or half empty? You've heard that expression? So if you're a pessimist, your glass is always half empty, right? And if you're an optimist, your glass is always half full. So what's a Christian? Psalmist tell, told us in Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. My cup is always full and overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Through all the seasons of our lives, for all the circumstances of our lives, God is good. Let's pray. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen.